Playbook, the place to find a sports coach or mentor. All sports, all ages, all abilities. It's about you playing to your potential, whatever level that is. Visit playbook.coach to find a coach. Playbook is also the place to sign up as a coach if you have sporting expertise and you're keen to share that with others through coaching and mentoring. Everyone is welcome to coach. It's super flexible. You set your own prices, locations, and schedule. Head to playbook.coach to sign up. G'day, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Ads and Dunks podcast. As always, brought to you by the Oz American Aces. Uh, got a shout out Playbook as well, mate. One of our newest sponsors and on our last couple of episodes. So uh, thanks to them for all their support. And uh, if you haven't booked a session yet, make sure you do so, whether it's with Adzi or I or someone else. Um, make sure you jump on their platform and and have a look. But joining me on the line, as always, one of my best mates, Adzi Trelaw. How are you going, mate? Yeah, I'm all right, mate. Uh, firstly, can't uh, book me on a playbook session at the moment because um, I had me uh, my ankle surgery last Wednesday. I get this little cast thing off, which is great because I've been uh, crutching around the house and yeah, kind of been a uh, kind of been a boring last week for me without anything too exciting happening in my life other than getting sick and feeling like a busted ass on the weekend. I didn't really leave my bed <laughs> on uh, on Saturday or Sunday. I um yeah, I got pretty crook actually and. And uh, yeah, I was just on the lozenges and a couple of antibiotics to get up and about, and um, didn't really do much at all. But I'm on the mend now. <laughs> you're sounding, you're sounding a bit crook, mate, as we speak. Still at the moment, are you still struggling? Oh no, I'm coming out the other end. I mean, it's, I was thinking the other day when I was sick and feeling sorry for myself, as everyone does when they get a bit crook. I was like, man, the amount of, like for as long as I've known Dunks, which has obviously been the end of 220. I don't think I've, I've ever seen you sick. And I reckon in between that time, I've been sick like 20 times. I just don't get it. You've got the looks. You've got great genetics. <laughs> you're a beautiful man and you never get sick. And I'm the total opposite. Nah. I always get sick. Oh, well, I don't know. Well, what's my reasoning? I probably, I take, I do take like zinc and stuff like that. And yeah, I suppose I'm trying to keep my immune system nice and, nice and healthy. Not saying that yours is wrong and bad at the moment because no, no. I know you can't. You, you you know you you can't you what do you do it you count your calories and you do all that calories. kind of stuff so yep. um yeah I'm not saying that that's your reasoning but maybe you got to get on the zinc mate that'd be good for you no I do take plenty of multivitamins and right now we're going to be plugging the multivitamins and the antibody not the antibiotics the um inner health pluses and all that stuff um I reckon honestly I reckon it comes down to and maybe have a, maybe have a good think is your mental uh capabilities and the strength that you can show and i'm being genuinely serious here i mean with me i i obviously you know i'm i often talk about anxiety and whatnot and the struggles that i have you're obviously someone who is and i see very mentally strong and um able to cope with things so much better and i reckon that's probably why i get crook a bit because i always worry about everything and you know the first thing i was thinking about when i had my uh when I had me um, operation was, oh, I can't, uh, can't really do anything. So maybe that's why I got a bit crook. But yeah, it's funny. This is how we're starting the potty with me being crook, talking about mental <laughs> health and, and uh, being crook. But I reckon that's, uh, I reckon that's why. I mean, it has been a tough last three days, but I'm on the mend now. So um, before like, we spoke last time last week, and that was before you headed in for surgery, you sort of touched on it a little bit. Um, how are you feeling? What did you get done for those that that are curious about? you know, what you've been through over the last few days? Yeah, no, thanks, mate. Thanks for asking. There have been plenty of people asking. Kimmy put a photo up um, the day of the surgery, I think, with Georgie cuddling me and they were worried that I was going in for something extremely serious, which it wasn't. I've just had a I had a nerve issue all year with my ankle um, pretty much from last uh, off-season and, um, you know, I didn't really have time to be able to go in and, and fix it up throughout the year because, you know, you miss time and I didn't want to miss time. So, all I pretty much had was a, um, oh, like a nerve repair, if you want to call it, and um, nothing structurally done. So the only thing I've, um, you know, have to take serious is the the wound healing, which is like normal um, surgeries, and you know, not being too <laughs> too fast to do things, and that's really hard for me because it's hard for me just to sit still and not do anything. So um, it's been uh, it's been uh, quite frustrating because um, you know I like to even 
get in the gym and do some upper body weights and whatnot. But even then, I haven't been able to do anything. I literally haven't been able to do anything since last Wednesday. And that's because of not not only the ankle, but obviously the the flu that I had over the weekend. And it's been absolutely killing me not being able to do anything. So um, tomorrow I go to uh, to see the surgeon, get the, as I said, the cast and everything taken off. I think I can start walking tomorrow. And as I said, I'm on the man now, which is great. And uh, you best believe I'll be doing something. So make sure you check, check your Apple Watch tomorrow because I'm sure you'll see a <laughs> session ticked off. What's something you're going to do with your first session back? Oh, if if I get the all clear to walk, which I will, I'll I'll, I'll ask him like, how far can I walk? What what kind of walk can I do? You know, can it be an incline or whatever? And if it if that's the case, I'll jump on the treaty and do an incline walk or whatever it is and definitely do some upper body weights. I need to do some form of weights because uh, it's frustrating me that I can't. Um, but, yeah, that's probably the session. I won't be doing anything too drastic, mate. I, uh, I, uh, I've i got to, you know, got to get this ankle right and then hopefully I can train. That's been the – that's probably been another thing that I, I want to have a little goal for myself. Um which people have asked on the questions that um, we've sent out to ask on our socials is what are the plans for the off-season? I'm giving, giving it away now. The plan for me is to hopefully train because the last – well, I think even when you were there, the two years that you were there with me, I don't think I trained much at all during during uh, the preseason and I want to be able to do that. So I need to take this um, – you know, I need to like really listen to what the physios and the doctors want me to do, which I will be. I mean, it's taken me – I'm 30 now. It's taken me 12, 12, 13 seasons to realize, but I'm, um, I need to thoroughly listen to what they want me to do just so I can have a really good training block and, and go into a season where I'm not rushing at the last, you know, two to three weeks to play where I can just smoothly transition into games. Yeah. So you're saying that you've got to listen to the physios and doctors and stuff. Are you going into the club to see the physios? Like, are they still there? It's obviously off season <laughs> for you boys at the moment. Are you still going in there to catch up and get the tick of approval to? to start walking or running? Yeah, yeah. So I was meant to go in um, yesterday, but as I said, I was pretty crook, so I couldn't leave, uh, couldn't leave the house. But I'll go in on Friday, I reckon. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I've got like a, a plan mapped out for me in terms of um, walking and and I guess not, well, alter G running more so than just running on ground first. I think that's really important for when you get a little bit older, being able to run on the alter G first. Um for those who don't know the Alter G, it's kind of this uh, machine. How would you explain an Alter G? It's this machine that takes your body weight. It feels like you're running on air, really. Yeah, it pretty much takes all your – you can set it to like certain percentages of body weight. So if you want to run at 80% body weight, it's pretty cool. It's actually mm. unbelievable for when you're coming back from injury or if you want to offload your legs a little bit over that the course of a week. Yeah, I think that's the plan. So for me, me, about, me to be able to hit that at a, um, at a certain target and then just progress from there. And as I said, I want to – I want to be able to train. So um, I'll go through with the physios, Scotty and Belly. And um, yeah, so I have been going in. It's um, it's good now because because finals and whatnot are still around, there's physios and, and the medical side of strength science, um, strength and, and sports science side is always kind of around up until the end of the granny. And then that's kind of when they go off and do their own thing. So yeah, mate, I'm, uh, I'll get all that sorted out and, um, yeah, hopefully uh, after you win the flag and give yourself a couple of weeks <laughs> off, two or three weeks off, we can do some training together because we'll be up in Queensland together. Uh, hopefully. We'll wait and see. We've got to get the win this week first, so, mate. Let me first ask, how was your week? How was, uh, before we move into any footy, what did you get up to? You obviously had a bye, um, non-footy talk. Yep. Anything exciting you did? Uh, not really. I mean, it's sort of at that time of the year and point of the year where you're Everything's really focused on footy. Um, we had, I think I mentioned it last week on the potty, was uh, we had a couple of days off. So it was like day on, day off kind of schedule for us. And um, probably the most exciting thing that I did actually, Tipper and I, uh, we actually, I was, I just surprised her because she always talks about she loves this, this kind of dog. And I was like, in my mind, I was like, oh, I'm going to go and try and tee up to maybe go and have a look at a dog somewhere. And um, so we went and had a look at, we went to a pet shop. And I, I like Googled it and made sure that that was the certain dog was there. And um, I was like, I was just said to her, I was like, right, we're getting in the car. We're just going to drive. And I'm not telling you where we're going. So she got in the car and we just drove to this pet shop and looked at this dog. It was the most <laughs> random thing ever. Are you a big dog or a small dog person? I am a Cocker Spaniel. That's the one. Cocker Spaniel. Uh, I'm, a, I'm probably a, a medium sized dog. Like, I don't really like small, small dogs, but. 
Okay. The goalie we've got right now, Archie, he's perfect. So well, hang on. Uh, I would consider Archie small. No, mate. You should see some of these dogs. They're like okay, okay, okay. I'm talking real small. Oh, so you're talking Griffin, Sonny. They're big. Huge. Too big for me. Okay. <laughs> oh, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't like the Great Danes and those big things that stand up and they're bigger than you? No, nah, I get scared of them, mate. Yeah, I know. And I don't like because their lifespan's always really sh- short. The big dogs only last like eight years, which sucks. So, um, no, that's that's nice. So, did are you gonna get? Are you guys gonna plan to get a dog? Eh? Well, we were thinking about it. It was very close. You know, when you go to a shop and you see, or you just see a little puppy, and you're like, "Wow, it's so cute!" Like, just need to get it. It was so hard to walk out of the joint, mate. I actually, oh, I was disappointed in myself that I'd teed up to do that because it made my afternoon on Friday just a little bit sad. So. Um. <laughs> yeah, I was a bit flat, and so was Tipper. But uh, what else did we do? Another thing we did actually on Saturday, we did a Master Chef sort of thing. So, oh, nice. um, Tipper did Tipper did entree, and I did main. And I yep. I went. There's a new butcher that's opened up in Paddington, and I got a massive like New York sirloin. You know those things that are on the bone, the big mm-hmm. um. You hold them up. What do you call them? Yeah, like the Ooh. big one, tomahawk. You know the tomahawk. It, tomahawk. Yep. So it was like a New York tomahawk or something like that, and. Um, I bought that and like cooked it on the barbecue. It was just. Do you do magic, the um? Mate, did magic. you do the salt bay where you put the salt yeah. down the um forearm? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I didn't do that, but it was good. It was very nice. How would you? Who would have won if it was graded between you and Tips? Who would have won? Well, Tipper did a ricotta like and bread, so she made like a um sourdough kind of bread that you could dip in ricotta with like a honey kind of glaze on the ricotta. It was pretty good. Nice. And then I did the, the the steak, and then I did a dessert as well. So because I did two, I probably would have taken it out. But Tippers was pretty good. What was your dessert? You didn't. T- what did you, you didn't tell us? Chocolate mousse. Ooh, homemade chocolate mousse. Yeah. Jeez, maybe that's what we need to do. You, you and uh, Tipper versus me and Kim. All right, let's do it in the off season. I'd love to do that. Yeah, no, it's good. Uh, we'll move on into the games then, unless you got anything else to talk about that you did that exciting. <laughs> Nah, this is, yeah, it's actually a first for me because normally I've just got nothing for you, but I just thought I might throw a couple of curly ones in this week. So let's move on to footy now. Yeah, you normally don't. Usually, oh, I don't really do anything, just footy. Well, that's good. Um, It's good. I will start with the Friday game, which was, I get my games wrong, Carlton, Melbourne, was it? Yeah. Yes. What was? You, what's your reaction? I mean, obviously, you would have watched that one closely because obviously you'll play, you had to play the, uh, the winner. Um. Did you watch it as a group or did you watch it individually and what was your reaction? No, nah, we watched it individually because we had training early Saturday morning, which is our big session. So, um, yeah, I mean, I just, yeah, it was a, it was an incredible game. I, I remember saying on here last week that I just felt like the Blues just had, I just had this weird feeling that they would win. I think I actually got you in the tips this week. I you got did. one and you got zero. I got zero. So that takes us to four each, to be honest. Yeah. Well, we. Yep. That annoys, that annoys but, me so much. But no, it was awesome to see the crowd and like just finals footy. We talked about it last week, but the way that it was just, you know, the spectacle of it all was incredible. And I'm sure it would have been awesome to be out there playing. But yeah, the Blues again, mate, they just keep backing mm-hmm. up and keep winning games of football. So um, did keep a really close eye on it. Obviously, a massive challenge for us moving into this week. Um, they're going really well. Just knocked off, you know, Melbourne, who have been one of the best teams over the last few years. So, uh, yeah, they were they were very impressive, and um, I'm sure the D's will be very disappointed too, though, on the other side. So, uh, it was a pretty good game of footy to watch. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, it was. I, I totally agree with you. I mean, you could just see the the um, the atmosphere and the intensity of the game through the screen, pretty much. I mean, it was going nuts, and I think Carlton's biggest mm. crowd since oh, it's the 70s or whatever it may be. Um, and you're right. Like I, it's funny because I tip Melbourne, but I almost want to change my opinion. Like I don't just had this feeling the day of the game. Obviously, couldn't because I tip Melbourne. But yeah, I, I wouldn't have been surprised if Carlton won. And um, I felt like the fact that they were able to still stay in the game, and Melbourne gave them too mm. many opportunities. As in, they had chances to kick goals late, and they didn't. And it shows you the importance of being able to kick goals when you have to kick goals in big finals because it come back and hurt you. And it just felt like every time Melbourne missed, Carlton were going to, you know, score. it just felt like one of those games. And even with – I remember I was sitting with a few of my mates. Um, I, had a, I had four schoolmates over and we were watching and one of them was a Carlton fan actually. 
Um, and uh, with about three minutes to go, or maybe four minutes to go, I said to him, I bet Carlton will win this. I actually said it to him confidently. I was like, Carlton will win this. And he was like, no, nah, they won't, blah, blah, blah. And then obviously the play that happens where I think Weedering takes the intercept and you could just see it unfolding. And even Weedering's decision to take the mark and then go inside and not not um, settle to then go back down the line again, which is something mm. you tend to do a lot in finals footy because – Four minutes to go on the game, you've got an intercept mark. You're probably thinking, wow, the clock's going to end soon. I need to get the ball going forward. His ability to go inside and then to overlap again and that mark out on the wing, was it Doherty who marked it or someone yeah. marked yeah. it out on the wing? And It was just an unbelievable passage of play that resulted in obviously um, them kicking a goal, which was just incredible um, to see. And, yeah, it, it's – you know, there's nothing like finals footy in Melbourne here, especially when there's – big, powerful Melbourne teams up and about and, and with Collingwood and, and Carlton, two of the, you know, probably biggest teams in the land um, up and about. It's crazy at the moment and it's, it's exciting to see. And, um, you know, I feel for Melbourne because, as you said, they would be disappointed, but they they had their opportunities in both games. I mean, as we touched on last week, they, they almost probably should have won on paper against Collingwood in, in week one with the areas that they dominated in, but they weren't able to. And then again this week, they, they won in – a lot of key areas that you think where they'd win the game and they had more scoring shots and whatnot, but it's one of those seasons for them where, you know, obviously they w- will have a lot to learn going forward. But, yeah, it was a, um incredible game to watch and um, one that I cannot wait to watch now this week with you guys playing Carlton. Yeah, it's going to be a, a good game between us, but we'll touch on that a little bit later. Um, the second game, the Giants versus Port, Saturday night. Maybe we were both wrong about this game. They uh, mm. The Giants, man, geez, they are – they would be a scary opposition to play right now. And, um, yeah, the, the Pies are going to have their hands full on, on Friday night. Yeah, I, I didn't um, – I, as I said, I didn't – I said it when the, the Giants-St. Kilda game first week, um, I said that they're the team that probably is the te- – my one team in the, in the competition left that could really shock teams. And yep. I'm glad I said that because they clearly are doing it. But the way that they're doing it is just the most impressive thing. And, and – the fact that they're able to win quite comfortably and convincingly and, and throughout the games never look like getting beaten. I mean, they didn't look like getting beaten against St. Kilda. And then on the weekend, they didn't look like getting beaten. And, and like you agree with that one, right? Yeah. The whole yeah, game the way was that, crazy. The way, the way that they're able to like win on the inside, but then their ability to spread and get out and use their legs and the speed around their ball, it's just something that you probably take for granted a little bit with watching the Giants earlier on. And now that, now that obviously their game's prime time and we see it, I mean, the guys like like Steve Coniglio came out and had one of his best games that I've ever seen him play. And I love the fact that he's doing that now and um, consistently performing like that because he's one of the great people that I've met. But, you know, he, he's faced his own challenges in terms of a couple of years ago where he was in and out of the team and now he's been able to come back and help lead a midfield with him and um, Tom Green and... Lockie Whitfield off halfback, Josh Kelly. These guys are just incredible runners and the way they're able to connect and, and get the ball going forward. I think it was you that said last week they, they're the team that plays exactly like Collingwood in a way. It's going to be a crazy game to watch. But, yeah, the giants poor game, it just blew my mind how good the Giants were. Yeah, it's a, and to be – and I'll sort of, I was going to touch on it a little bit after this when we talked about Collingwood playing the Giants, but to be in a hostile environment like they were in Adelaide, surely that gives them – a lot of confidence going into mm. Friday night against the Pies because Adelaide Oval, as we all know, is one of the most hostile environments you can play in. So, unbelievable uh, game from them, but also practice for what's ahead, I, I feel. Yeah, mate, I, I agree. Tom Green has come out after – I've just seen him come up on the giant socials where he said, I think, anywhere, anytime, whatever, and he's legit. I mean, it really is. And, and mm. the fact that they're able to take that mentality and mantra and – even listening to Toby Green um, talk after the game, where he, he spoke about how he, you know, he's never trusted a group the way that he does this group. It's probably not the most talented, but it's probably the team that he trusts the most. It's clearly evident with the way that they're playing, and he even touched on. Um, we know every week we're going to be outnumbered, and we love looking at our little section of fans because you know, you know what it's like in finals. The, the fans that do go, they put them in a section where they're all together, which is pretty cool because you see just teal and black for the Port Adelaide team all around the stadium. And then at, in a the little corner, there's the orange army, they call the orange army and whatnot. So it's pretty cool that they they know that that's what they're going to expect and they don't let it phase them. And 
um, it's great. I mean, you know, no doubt they're going to go in fully confident this week and um, they've been there before. 2019 preliminary final, obviously, I played in that game, Collingwood GWS, where there was 90,000 people and um, it was one of the great games of the season. Unfortunately, we weren't able to win, but they came and they came with full confidence and and they beat us. And, um, you know, I, I got no doubt they'll come the same mindset, the same mantra. Um, obviously, the matchups, uh, I feel like, suit both teams where they match up on each other really well. I cannot wait to see Toby Green versus Braden Maynard if that's the matchup that we get to see. But, um, yeah, really looking forward um, to that game and, and seeing, you know, what happens. Yeah, we might as well move straight into that game now. Who do you think is going to win? You think the Pies are going to be too strong or do you think the Giants are, are a huge chance? No, I, I've felt like the Pies and, you know, I'd be wrong to go against my tips because I've I said at the start of the finals, Collingwood and you guys to make the granny and I think that'll still be the case. Um, but I'm going to say again, it would not surprise me if the Giants win. I mean... With your question, it surprised me. Uh, sorry, with your game, it would surprise me if Carlton beat you guys. I'm fully confident that you guys will be able to get the job done up there. I just can't see teams beating you up there. But with this, and we'll touch on that, but with this Collingwood game, Giants game, it just wouldn't surprise me if the Giants win. If they get momentum and get a run on, doesn't matter. They're able to score. And I experienced that this year against them in, in Ballarat. We were up by, I think, 40 points at one stage. And in the third quarter, they piled on five goals in like – six or seven minutes and it just shows they're able to do that i feel like it just would not surprise me if they do that but my tip still is collingwood i just feel like the way they play the mcg so well um full of momentum got a healthy list um they're going to be really up for it they've had a great season where they know that um you know it doesn't matter if it, it doesn't matter what the season's done they have to win a prelim and then get into a granny and hopefully win a granny for their season to be considered a success. So I feel like they're going to come with that and, and be fully confident they get the job done and I reckon they will. What about you? Yeah, I'm exactly the same as you. It's hard to 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 not tip Collingwood, but oh, you just watch. Like, I, I honestly thought last week that Port Adelaide would get over the top of the Giants and I think everyone or most people thought that. There was a lot of media talk about the Giants being really good and and you know a bit of a wild card selection for the round, but yeah, it's hard not to to go against them um, at this point. But I just can't see Collingwood losing. I feel like mm-hmm. they're the, they've been the, probably with the best team all year, and um, you know at home on their deck, and uh, the Giants obviously not playing there a hell of a lot throughout the year. But I feel I just feel like it's going to be a close one. I think it's going to be nail biter. I think um, it could go either way, but I'm going to tip Collingwood just because I feel like that's the way it's been all year. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It's it's intriguing because, as as I just said before, they play, in my opinion, as close to a game style as most as most two teams play alike, if you know what I mean. Um, mm. And it'll be interesting to see how they defend each other because I feel like it's almost like they're going to be – it's almost like they're, they've, they know what the style is like so they kind of know how to defend it. And you see – when that when Collingwood and Giants get scored against, a lot of their goals scored against is because they might turn the ball ball over at half forward, whatever it may be, because they have so many numbers running in waves. Teams that are able to rebound and get the ball at the back, it seems like that's how teams can only score against Collingwood and the Giants. And the fact that they're playing against other playing against each other like that, it just makes it more intriguing to see how they're going to go out and try and defend each other. Yeah, I think if as you just said, I think if the Giants midfield can win it at the source and get it, you know, get Collingwood running the other way because they have such a, a strong wave. I feel like that's going to be the balance of who wins a game because mm. Mm. whichever team can get it on their terms is going to then go forward and potentially score. So that's honestly the way I, th- I see it being played out is whoever wins that midfield battle, whoever wins it around the source, the contested possession and gets it moving forward is going to win the game of footy. Yeah, I was just about to say that as well. I couldn't agree with you more because I feel like a lot of the times when the Giants dominate around the ball is when they win the game because their insiders yeah. can get it out to guys like Lockie Whitfield and and Josh Kelly, we mentioned, who've been playing a bit outside. Um, so it's an intriguing one and I, I cannot wait to see – I want to touch on a couple of the matchups. I cannot wait to see Toby and, and Braden Maynard. I, I know – um, 2018, there was a massive build-up for that game when we played him in 18 in the semi-final, um, and Toby play, uh, Bruzzy played on Toby, and it was something that he built up and played a really good job on. I um, played a really 
good game on on Toby. So, you know, fast forward five years, I cannot wait to see. I feel like it's going to be one of the juiciest matchups in the um in the final series. Um, is there any matchups you think, or is there any players that you think that either teams can't let get off the chain? I think it's the Giants small forwards. Like I look at guys like you know, Toby Bedford's been one for me that's been a huge pick up for them. Like his pressure yep. and his creativity with ball in hand and, you know, he compliments Daniels and, and Toby Green and, and the like. So I feel like if they can put enough pressure on the Collingwood defenders, it'll it'll go a long way um, for them to keep it in their front half. But yeah, in terms of key matchups, midfield, I think Josh Kelly's in probably some of his career best form. So is, you know, Colgs you mentioned earlier and, and Tom Green. So their midfield, the Giants midfield versus the the Pies midfield with, with Taylor Adams going out, they obviously lose a, a key figure in there. So um, it's going to be a huge matchup amongst the mids, and I think that's probably where the game's going to be won, as I said earlier. Yeah, and obviously Nick Dacos is another big in for him. He's uh, timed his well, timed his run pretty well. So it'll be intriguing where he plays, whether he plays half back or they slot him straight back inside with obviously Tay going out. But um, it'll be a beauty, and that's on the – that's on the Friday, so you'll be able to watch that and, and get real revved up and G'd up for your game on the Saturday. <laughs> it's crazy, mate. Like up here, it's a different kind of lifestyle and bubble and everyone talks about it being, you know, less footy orientated. But when you watch games, like last Friday night, I was, mate, at 11 p.m. after that game, I was ready to go. I was ready to train. <laughs> I was nearly going to text um, Fags and be like, Fags, can we get down there now? I'll turn the lights yeah. on at the gather. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, it's always so like, mate. I'm like that, and I'm freaking on one leg at the moment. I've got a, I had a sore throat, and even I was ready to go. But um, it's exciting for you. We'll move on to your game, and um, you know this is the one game that all of us at uh, the Ads and Dunks podcast and those American Aces, everyone's getting around, and um, no doubt everyone will send their well wishes. But um, and unfortunately, I can't come to this game, which breaks my heart. I uh, I wanted to, but I feel I just feel like I won't be able to get around. Really well, so I'll be supporting. I will be supporting you, and if you make the granny, I'll be there. Don't worry. Um, sorry, let me say once you make the granny, I'll be there. But <laughs> um, yeah, obviously you guys play Carlton. I'll give my thoughts first before I let before I pepper you with questions. Um, yep. I, uh, I've, yeah, I, I'm, I'm extremely excited for the matchups. I feel like it's going to be a great matchups. But um, you know, watching you guys play at the Gabba all year, and then two weeks ago watching you play against a team like. Um, Port Adelaide, who, you know, obviously they bowed out in, in straight sets, but they've played some great footy over the year and I felt like they were one of the, um, you know, the red-hot favourites coming in. And the way that you were able to win quite comfortably and dominate around the ball, I feel like that's kind of where the advantage is going to be for you guys. I definitely feel like because you know the ground really well and you've been able to have a week off and, um, you know, been able to prepare really well, I feel like it'll be close real early. But you know, that's normal, finest footies like that, but then I feel like you're just going to be able to run over top of them and, um, you know, the strengths that you've got, you guys have been able to show where whenever you guys get the ball in an attacking position, you're extremely hard to stop with the quality that you have up forward um, and no doubt the past, you know, five, six years for the boys there that have been there where they've been so close, that's probably what's going to be motivating, motivating for them. Um, I feel like uh, you're just going to have that edge and, um, and unfortunately, the run that Carlton have had is going to come to an end. Although it's been really cool to watch and deep, 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 deep down, I'm that uh, 10, 11, 12-year-old boy that absolutely loved the Carlton Footy Club and it's pretty cool to see the Carlton boys up and about. But I I just feel like, yeah, you guys will be too strong up there and um, we'll win in the end and, and you'll make the granny, which will be exciting. That's my opinion out of the way. You, mate, how uh, how do you feel... Uh, how do you, how do you feel? You guys are ready to attack this game. Where do you feel like it's going to be won and lost? How are you feeling? Um, I'll just start with that. Yeah, I mean, it's probably rude not to mention it first. The Blues, you know, they've been inspirational the way they've sort of come through the the final series so far. And watching from afar, it's been pretty cool to watch. Like uh, the way that they're playing, and w- that means that we're going to be have to be at our very best on Saturday night to beat them. Because I s- sort of said it earlier, but they just they got this incredible momentum that they've got with their you know their supporter base, but just the way that they're playing their footy, and I'm sure they're full of confidence and um, going to come up here with a full head of steam. So uh, it's been good prep for us. Um, really excited. Obviously, it's been a couple of weeks, so you you sort of you, you think about it a little bit here and there, but um, 
until you watch games like we did on Friday night and Saturday night, you don't really think about it too much. So um, being outside the footy bubble helps with that. And it's been a nice build up for us, very similar to the Port Adelaide build up. Um, it's obviously a prelim final. So now it's a knockout uh, stage for us. So that's a adds a little bit of an extra layer of, you know, nervousness and, you know, you're just on the edge a little bit more, but I'm excited, mate. I think all the boys are excited for the opportunity to play another final at home and in front of our crowd. And um, yeah, it'll be a huge game for us to hopefully be able to bring our best and, and get over the line. But we're going to have to beat our very best to beat the Blues. Yeah. How's the week looked for you guys so far? What do you have on for the rest of the week? And have you had a chance to preview Carlton yet? Yeah, we looked at them today. So it's been a normal week. Monday is a bit of a recovery day because we had a big session on Saturday. Um, so we came in yesterday and had a little meeting and then um, pretty much flowed through the afternoon. Today was you know, a session in front of our fans, an open session, which was awesome to get everyone out to um, Brighton Homes Arena and, and you know, obviously train in front of some people because being so far away, not many people come out at once. Mm. So it's a little bit like you, know, you might get 20 or 30 out there, but when you get you know, 500 to 1,000, it's pretty awesome. So... That was cool today and um, tomorrow we've got a day off. Thursday is our main session at the Gabba and then Friday Captain's Run play Saturday. So a very normal week for us um, leading into yeah, what is a big final. Where, where do you think for you guys is like what's going to be the biggest challenge for you? Maybe a particular area like their mids backs or do you think any particular area in terms of how they play is going to be a challenge for you guys? Like where are the... Where are the maybe what ifs for you? Um, if you were, if Carlton were to get a, were to get a roll on, what is their strength that might challenge you guys? Oh, I think they've got strengths across all three lines. Their midfield, their contested ball, you know, with Cripper in there, and and you know, Kennedy and the guys that roll through Hewitt, Walsh, you know, the, the list goes on. They've got a lot of guys that are strong over the footy. So I feel like if they get on top, it'll be in that area. So we got to be um, ready for that, and hopefully cater for it because at times throughout the game, you know, that momentum will always shift. It's a game of AFL football. We all expect both teams to get a look at some point. It's just, you know, the team that can get on top more that'll uh, win the game of footy. So that's one area. I feel like their backs are really good with their overlap and um, being able to break the lines like Saad and and the likes. You know, Marchbank has been pretty good uh, coming in for him. He didn't play against us early in the year. So they've had a lot of different personnel changes and then their fours, you know, Kerno wins a Coleman medal, so he's up there for a reason and um, their small forwards have probably been a revelation for him too. So we're going to have to be at our best in the air but on the ground as well. Yeah, and that's obviously expecting that Jack Martin and Harry Mackay come in as well. So they seem like they're pretty healthy as well and um, yep. you have touched on their best is is – you know, pretty scary good. But as I said, I feel like you guys would be too strong in the end. Is there any matchup that potentially, you know, you might get or, you know, as you said, their mids have been pretty good. Sam Walsh has been, well, I think he's leading that Gary Ayres um, award, which is the best finals player. Um, Paddy Cripps has been good. I feel like you match up really well on um, Cripper as well with the big guy, not necessarily a tag, but maybe match up on him at stoppage. Is there anything that you're expecting to go into the game with? Yeah, I mean, I, I went to him a little bit earlier in the year at stoppages and, you know, a little bit around the ground, but it wasn't, wasn't a, a full-on tag, you could call it. So I'm sure there'll be matchups, but as I always say, like I like to go to the most dangerous mid at the time and whether that's Cripper or whether it's Walsh or whether it's Hewitt or whoever it is, Chera, um, yeah, they've got so many mids in there that roll through. So, yeah, we just like to sort of play on our – hopefully we can play on our terms, but if we're not, then, yeah, try and negate a couple of their – um, players that have been going well, and Walshy, as you said, leading that, leading the Gary Ayres Award. So um, I'm sure we're going to have to put some attention into him too. Yeah, well, mate, it's exciting. We're all, um, as I said, myself, Brado, Tommy, everyone at the Oz American Aces uh, and Ads and Dunks podcast. Everyone's getting around you. Uh, we're all supporting you. Gave you a bit of love last week, but I'll do it again. We uh, can't wait to uh, <laughs> see you do your thing, and um, hopefully you win, and then you can uh, take us through the grand final and. Yeah, be riding the wave of you there. So good luck for the game this week, mate. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Brownlow medals coming up on Monday. We're not going to talk prior to that, obviously. Give us your give us your rough top five. Oh, top five. You put me on the spot. Oh, um, you want me to go first? Or you go? Yeah, you, you go you go first. Well, my I think top five in um I think the top two will be either Dakes or Bont. 
So yep. obviously the answer is they're one of my winners. And then I think ooh, I'm going to go Christian Petrarca, um, Zach Butters, and then I'm going to go a real guy that no one's really spoken about, Caleb Sarong. I think he'll be around the mark as well. Okay. I like it. I like it. Well, I'll go in no particular order. Um, yeah, Dacos Bont. I think Butters will be up there. I think uh, Petrarca will be up there, same as you. And then I've got another wild card that I think will pull a lot of votes, and that's Jack Sinclair. Oh, yeah. From the Saints. Yeah, that's a good one. There was someone did ask uh, a question in the question questionnaire. I may as well mention it now. Who gets more votes out of me and you? Uh, you. You will. No, nah, you will, mate. You know, it was funny. Last year, do you remember, I think I only polled in three games. We got, in every game that I polled, so I only polled in three games. In those three games, you polled as well. Is that because you give me the ball? because <laughs> no, you gave me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we actually well, used to have that thing. Remember, remember we used to have that thing and it was like, if I gave you the ball a couple of times, during the week, I'd be in here because you never gave me the ball. Because <laughs> yes. always, I, and you used to say, because I handball you the ball and then you kick. So that's your role. And my role is to just give you the ball so you can get on the outside. <laughs> yeah, I do remember that. And I do miss it, to be quite frank. But uh, no, it's, uh, it's good to watch from afar. You just give the ball to Lockie Neal and Hugh McGuggage and all these guys <laughs> that go through there. It's, it's good to see. So I can't wait to see um, Huey and, and Lock pole a few. Lockie Neal's actually. He's someone that not many people have spoken about, but he'll be right up there as well in the Brownlow, which is which is quite incredible because he's polled so many votes over the years. I actually think he's going to be top five. I should have put him in there. I think he's going to be. I, I think he's going to go closer than what a lot of people think. Mm, it's, it kind of reminds me of. Do you know the year? I'm not sure if you know the year. I was a bit of like a Brownlow head. I used to know. I reckon I know all the winners back from 1994 onwards. But anyway, there was a year where Juddy and Swanee, so Juddy in 210, it was meant to be Swanee's year. And then in 211, vice versa, it was meant to be Juddy's year, but it was Swanee's year. Do you know what I mean? So the opposite one. Yeah. And I feel like last year, Lockie was kind of meant to be Lockie's year and he didn't win. This year, it's n- not meant to be Lockie's year, but it, it wouldn't surprise me he was up there. And I didn't have him in my top five, but he would, as you said, he you guys have won enough games and he's played that good of footy for it. For him to poll three votes, so it'll be interesting to see come um, come Brownlow night. Can't wait to see. Yeah, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Petrarca out and put Lockie in my top five. So I'm I'm a little bit different to you. So your top five, that you're saying, any of those five could win it. Yeah, not oh, okay. not Sinclair. I'm gonna say not Sinclair, but I'm gonna say Bontempelli, Dacos, Neil, and who was the other? Butters. One? Yeah, Butters. Butters. Yep. Hmm. I'm probably oh, gonna say it. I'm. I'm going to say Butters and Sinclair won't win it, but the other three could. Ooh, okay. Well, I reckon Dacos and Bont, I reckon they're the two clear ones and then the other three that I mentioned. But Lockie Neal, now that I think about it, do, oh. no, I'll leave him in. Oh, I might take Strong no, out can't. and put Lockie Neal in there. No, you can't. You can't. Oh, <laughs> it's a hard one because, yeah, anyway, we we'll, we'll, can't wait to talk about it on Tuesday when uh, you're, you're uh, hopefully playing off for the granny and – um, yeah, I, and I'll be there as well for what it's worth. So make sure all our fans have a look and check out Kimmy and see how gorgeous she looks. She's going to look absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> um, we'll move on. Playbook play of the week. I'll go yes, first because be you've got it. a good one. I'm going to go down the NFL route. And, uh, you know, Tommy's wanted us to do AFL and, and things that are on playbook coach. But this is – I'm giving playbook coach a bit of a, uh, you know, maybe uh, an area where they could improve with getting some NFL – players on board or maybe get some um, get some um, talent yeah get some American football and talent because what a sport it is but um, my playbook play of the week which is incredible I'm not sure if you've seen this but did you see the end of the Denver Broncos game oh yes I did Russell Wilson yeah. yes yes. so they were down by eight and for the non-NFL people out there you need a touchdown's worth six and then a PAT which is a kick after which is worth seven or Sorry, worth one, so you get seven. Or you could go for a two-point conversion, which is essentially a down where you've got to throw it in or rush it in, into the end zone. So they were down by eight. Clock was running out. Russell Wilson was on – oh, it would have been on his own 
40 yard line, maybe 50 yard line, the halfway, threw a Hail Mary into a pack of about seven. And the ball just bumbled and fumbled and whatnot and just landed in one of the one of his team. I forgot who it was, but landed in one of his players' laps and he walked in for the touchdown. And it's a, a play that happens once in, you know, it might happen two or three times a year. It never, ever happens. And for that to happen was crazy. For what it's worth, they didn't score the two-point conversion, but the <laughs> touchdown itself was unbelievable. So that's my playbook play of the week. I like it. Uh, my playbook play of the week, I'm going to stick with the AFL. And it's uh, you mentioned it earlier, but the the final play to, that led to Carlton getting in front at the MCG on Friday night, which was Weedering intercept mark straight across inside to I can't remember who it was. I think it was Hollands, maybe the maybe. Um, one of the young players. And then he went to Doherty, Doherty inside fifty to Acres, Acres goal, and that was it. It was um, that was my playbook play of the week. It was just an incredible just watching. From like I couldn't imagine what it was like at the at the ground because the fans would have been if, if there was a roof on that stadium I reckon it would have would have blown off it was crazy it and, was yeah, um and, and they would have known there was a minute to go because I think it was fifty seven seconds or whatever when he kicked it to go so yeah it would have been insane yeah yeah so that's my playbook play of the week and as I said earlier the Blues are on a roll and we're gonna have to be at our very best to beat them this week no that's a good playbook play of the week thanks to playbook as always um before we get onto our questions to end. The potty, our second last potty, I believe, which is uh, going to be quite sad because it's been great. Um, NFL fantasy, we're uh, we're touching it on, we're touching on it every week. The last couple of weeks, you and I have gone two and zero in the uh, American Aces League, which is great. We uh, we beat our great mate Crozzy on the weekend, um, which didn't look good for us at the start because he's tight end. TJ no Hawkins scored two touchdowns on Thursday, which was um, or Friday, which is frustrating, but. I went five uh, five of eight this week, so I lost in three leagues, but it was a good week. I went two of five this week again. Which which leagues did you win? You won in our league, obviously, and then oh, the Bulldogs league. Yep, the Bulldogs league. Yeah, so I won in that one. I think I beat I beat Hunts. I beat Lockie Hunter. Scored a good score actually. I was pretty happy with my score in that league. The bull, it's, it's funny. funny the Bulldogs, actually, yeah. You know what? You know what's funny? NFL. They sent me an email after the draft, and they said I was going to go zero and twelve for the year. Ooh. So. I've I've proved them wrong already. So the experts that looked at my team, see you later. What are you two and zero, or you one and one? One and one. For what it's worth, it's quite funny as well for our listeners. The uh, the Bulldogs League has been going for a couple of years now because you just said you're in it and Hunts is in it and Hunts is even at the footy club. So yeah. that's not like we've just sent it out to him. But um, no, it's been good. I'm doing my uh, NFL Australia um socials sent out a message for me to do the this week's NFL power rankings. So I've just sent out my uh, NFL power rankings to him. It's going to be up on Thursday. So if you were – give us your top three. I would love to hear your top three. Well, in terms did you of, put the charges? So power rankings in terms of – oh, no, no, no. Clearly going off going off what we've seen. So the first two weeks, I can't be biased because I still think – I know the charges are 0-2 and, and I don't want to eat my own words come the end of the year. So I'm still going to ride hard with the, with the charges. Offensively, they look okay. Austin Eckler was a big out this week for him. Defensively, they look really bad at the moment. So hopefully they can turn that around. But I would love to hear your top three right now. All right. Do you want my top three? So my top three. In order. Be, in order. Your number one yep. team right now. Yep. Number one team, San Fran. Okay. 49ers. Okay. Number, number two, two team. I think that they're not playing their best, but I still reckon that they're going to come good at the right time, and that's Philly. Yep. And then my third, my third is uh, the Chiefs, Kansas City. Oh, I feel like there'd be a lot of people out there to be like, mm, you're just riding on their past couple of years because they have not looked good at all. The Chiefs. Nah, but I just feel like, yeah, I, I still feel like they're they're going to be okay. So that's my top three power rankings right now. Well, I'm not going to say mine because. Uh, I'm, unless you want me to, but I want it to be a bit of a surprise. But Give not us your number one. My one is Dallas. You've forgotten about Dallas, mate. Oh, I have, yeah. That's, I would have put so, them at three. Okay, so I'll give you a chance. You now have them at three? Yep. Yep. So Dallas, because both ends of the ball, they just look unbelievable. Defensively, yep. coming up against Dallas and Micah Parsons, I mean, whoa, they look scary. So they're my yep. uh, number one team. I'll give my top three. Whatever. My number two is San Fran, as you've just touched yep. on. And my number three is Philly. Oh, I was pretty so, good. 
So we are close. Um, the rest was a bit tough because the, there's some teams that are 2-0 and that have surprised you a little bit, like Tampa Bay are 2-0. Um, the, the Commanders are 2-0, and which is surprising. Baltimore are 2-0. and You know, the Bills are 1-1, one one, but the way they played on the weekend, they look unbelievable. Like, I almost feel like the, the f- first week is kind of a blimp in the radar where – what we seen on the weekend is what we're probably going to get more of. Like, that's what we're expecting of them. They're good both ends of the ball. Um, so, yeah, it's a bit surprising at the moment. I am, I'm keen to see what people think of my top 10. No doubt there's going to be a lot of people out there that just laugh at me. <laughs> but um, um, make I'm sure you jump on the it. NFL Australia uh, Instagram and have a look on Thursday because it's going to be up there. Um, like questions, it. mate. We uh, finish off with some questions. I had one from the Brisbane Lions, just funny off the top. Oh, yeah. Um, they said, "Is there any conflict for, between our podcast and the uh, kick-ons with Cam and, and Huey podcast?" And I said, "Well, my answer is no, because ours is better." But, <laughs> um, have you have you seen their podcast? I've seen a bit. Of, I've seen your episode when you're on it, and I've seen a lot of like screen grabs from it where they be up on the socials. Yeah, I have. There's a, there is a little. I would say there is a little bit of rivalry, though. We've talked about it before the charts, so you can actually look up. On the thing, you can see where you're rated, like your yeah. your podcast is rated on the charts of Spotify. Mm. And I remember early days, I can't remember who they had on, but it was someone that was there. It popped off a little bit, so they were ahead of us on the thing. And one of the boys came up to me and said, "Oh, we're better than you this week," or something <laughs> like that. So there's oh, a bit of rivalry there. It's Huey and Cam, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh well, maybe uh, that's something next year that we can uh, have a uh, a weekly um. Rate off, I guess. Competition. See who uh, see who's winning. Uh, well, do you have a question though? <laughs> do you have any other questions? Um, yeah, oh, you go, you go. I've got one to to kick us off. All right, this is from Jacob Dot Langham. What is your favorite book? Oh, my favorite book. I don't read a lot. Uh, what I used to read a lot as a kid, but not anymore. So I don't really have a favorite book. <laughs> At the moment. Oh, okay. What's a favorite book you've read then? Specky McGee. Okay. <laughs> Specky <laughs> McGee. What a freaking book. Remember that in school? That was great. Brado oh. would love that. He'd be all over Specky McGee. Yeah. Uh, mate, I, I honestly don't read books, so I couldn't tell you. Yeah. I could, to be honest with you, I haven't seen you read a book. So I knew it was going to be a bit of a hard question for you. Mm-hmm. Anyway, your question, mate. All right. Mine's from... M underscore Bishop Choff. Uh, Palmy or Palmer? Oh, I've got the same question. Oh, no, I was going to ask that. Uh, Palmer. Palmer? Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a Palmer. I don't know okay. where people get this Palmy. It's not right. I don't well, know who does that. Well, your Queenslanders say Palmy, don't they? I think so, yeah, because Tipper yeah, okay. says Palmy. Oh, yeah. I was about to say, Tipper's not Queenslander. She's from South Australia, but yeah. Yeah, well, Kimmy, Kimmy says Palmy as well, but I think I've changed her to Palmer because whenever I, I say that, she or whenever she wants to get one, she ends up a lot of the time saying Palmer. So I definitely think Palmer as well. Sunny, Sunya749936. That's a, uh, that's a funny young one. Top of your head, most robbed Brownlow. Oh, most robbed Brownlow. When I say robbed, it can't be robbed because – I can't think of anyone who's won a Brownlow that hasn't deserved it. I'm going well, to say I've got one. I'm going to re- rephrase the question to a guy that probably you thought was going to win but didn't win. Law Lockie Neal last year. I thought he deserved to win and got robbed by Cripper at the end. Oh, that's my, yes. That's my yes. Thing. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say, well, I'll go the year that surprised everyone. Oh, I don't know if you remember. Do you, can you tell me who won the Brownlow in 2000? Oh, no way. What about when I, if I were to say that it surprised everyone? It's probably the most surprised, surprising winner that we've ever seen. Wait, it wasn't um, Adam Cooney? No, that was 2008. That, that was another oh. one that surprised everyone. Shane Woe Woden. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that year, my favorite player that I've touched on a lot, Anthony Kudafides, he was the uh, red hot favorite going in. And even I thought he was going to win. I was old enough to watch it then. I was seven. Uh, and Shane Wood won. So I'm going to go Cuda, 2000. I like it. I like it. My my next question, Mia D'Arcangelo, what job would you be doing if you weren't playing AFL? Jeez, that is a, working on the farm, I reckon. 
<laughs> that is the biggest joke ever. Um, no, come on, in all honesty. I actually got asked this the other day and I, I didn't really know what to say because you sort of go through, you study, you do things, but what job would you be doing right now if you weren't playing AFL? Well, the thing is, like, and like I, I always knew that I had an athletic ability and would be good at sport, a particular sport. So I can't give you the answer because I feel like saying, oh, if I wasn't good at footy, if I didn't know that as a kid, I would have tried to be good at basketball or something and tried to be a basketball. Like it's so hard because I didn't prepare for any other job. I feel like now I can – so if I were to end right now and go into a job, I feel like some of that intrigues me. There's a lot that intrigues me. Like there's coaching side, there's real estate, obviously doing the real estate course. Um, But the number one thing, I love working with kids and upcoming talent and being like a – um, a source of support. So I'm going to say like a player agent. So I'm going to do a player agent. agent. Yeah. So I'm going to do a player agent course. You can do a course and that's – usually do it around the, when you're retiring. So the reason why I've done it is because I don't feel like retiring uh, anytime soon. Um, that's probably the number one thing that is interesting to me at the moment. What about you? I've – I yeah. I got As I said, I got asked it the other day and I was not sure what to say. So I don't know. I Things I like doing – cooking i've obviously done my real estate course this year um and then outside of that just business kind of ideas so i'd be doing something to do i suppose with a business kind of mind but i'm not too sure what it would be because i've got no idea so Mm. yeah it's a hard one very hard question it is hard uh this is from linda chowman favorite taylor swift song I'm terrible with music, mate. You know me. You know me. That's why I'm asking you. So you can't think of one on the top of your head. Can you sing a bit of it though? No. Nah. Maybe. Oh well. The obvious one for Taylor Swift is "Love Story." Do you know "Love Story"? Yeah. Maybe that's your favorite. Potentially. Oh, I. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you, mate. I'm sure. Well, I was a big, ta- terrible. big Taylor Swift fan. Have been for a long time. My favorite Taylor Swift song is "White Horse." It's a good song. How does mate. that go? I ain't gonna sing it. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, I've got one here. I, I, I've been meaning to shout out um, Jasmine. She's she's a Bulldog supporter. She came to our um, our qualifying final and I met her uh, a couple of weeks before that. I think it might have been at the Gold Coast game, but she said to give her a shout out on the podcast. So she said to say good day to you and give her a shout out at the podcast. She was at our open training today. So um she was into me too. She's like, "What do I got to do to get a shout out?" So I was like, "Right, I'll uh, I'll do it." She wear, so was um, she wearing bulldogs or Brisbane? Go. A couple of weeks ago, she was wearing bulldogs, and then oh. today at the open session, she had a Brisbane scarf with my badge <laughs> on it. So um, oh, I'm trying, yeah, trying to convert it. Um, this is from one of me, uh, my oldest friends. I uh, grew up with him, went to school together. Jacob, he's asked, "Are you a folder or a scruncher?" <laughs> <laughs> the boys on um. On the other potty, the Storm Boys, they got asked about this. I think they did a bit of a poll amongst them. I'm a I'm a folder. What are you? I am. But why does that not surprise me? I'm a um I'm a scruncher. I have hey, time really? to fold, mate. Just open just rip it up, hold it, and then you know, do your business. I used to be a scruncher, but now I'm a folder. So that might be saying something. I moved from the country to the city <laughs> and now I'm a folder. Yeah, maybe it is saying something. Um one here, Adele Smith. Uh, favorite place in Brisbane? What's yours? Oh, geez, Brisbane and Melbourne. Sorry, she wrote Brisbane and Melbourne. What's your favorite thing to do in both places? Favorite thing to do, or favorite oh. place? It says favorite slash coolest place. We, I've got a got a house in Hawthorne, in Brisbane, Hawthorne. Yeah, and I feel like the whole area there is it Oxford Street? Is that the street? Yeah, yeah. I feel Belimba. like that area. Yep, I feel like uh, that's all I can really give you because I haven't really seen much of Brisbane and I can only go to where uh, where the house is up there. So Hawthorne is probably for me. What about you? Uh, I'm going to say my favourite thing in Brisbane. I go there a little bit because I get my hair cut there. Chermside. Okay. The big shopping centre, that's probably – otherwise it's my local hood, so Paddington. Love getting around Paddington and going to all the sandwich bars that keep popping up. Uh, we'll cut more. Um Oh, we didn't do Melbourne. What's your favourite thing to do in Melbourne? Mate, I've got everything I need at my house. 
<laughs> so just go on in love the going to the movies. Yeah, one one of my hobbies, and it's funny because you are right. I I love going to watch a movie. So every most weeks during the year, I go and watch a movie. And uh, I always go to Chatty. Chatty's the place I go to, Chaston Shopping Centre, because uh, their lux at um, Hoyt's Cinemas is incredible. And it's funny, one time this year when I went, I was walking in with my tickets and gave him my ticket, obviously, and the guy was like kind of smiling. And I was like, what? like I, I've jokingly said, oh, what are you smiling? He goes, oh, I always see you here. You're always here every week. And I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I love going to watch a movie. There in that donut place, whatever that's called, in near your house at the shopping center. There, um, what's that one? Daniel's Donuts. Daniel's Donuts. That's the one. Yes, you love that. You. What about you in Melbourne? Going back to the mine farm, well, or Victoria? Victoria, yeah. Well, going back home. But uh, I used speaking of movies. I used to go to Vic Gardens because they used to have mm-hmm. the same thing, Hoyts and Lux, and it was beautiful. But my favorite thing, I can't really put my finger on. I never used to go to the beach much. I never used to. My favourite thing, mate, is just hanging out with you in Melbourne. Me too, mate. Oh, maybe that's my favourite <laughs> thing about Brisbane then. I'll change my mind because <laughs> I don't get to see you much. Um, yeah, well, as I said, a couple more. Uh, this is from Lockie2244. Out of all the goals you have kicked in your career, which one is your favourite? I kicked a good goal one day off my left foot, just threw it on the boot. I was running towards the boundary and threw it on the boot and it went through. And that was against Gold Coast. I think it was 20, 2018 or 2019. can't remember which one it was, but um, it was the biggest fluke of my life, mate. I'd never kicked a goal like that ever. And it was just went through. So that's probably my favorite. <laughs> was that you? on the boundary line where you were running and you like kicked it along the ground kind of? Oh, that was yeah. a sick goal. Yeah. My favorite, the loudest one that I remember that I ever kicked was whoa, probably – the 2018 preliminary final um, against Richmond when I kicked, I just yep. smacked it on my left and it was like an inside-out torpedo that went through. Um, that was the loudest, but I think my favorite, oh, I often think back to the first time I kicked the goal for the Bulldogs. That was, uh, you know, because the first time against the Giants, it was because there was eight, there was a new team. Every single week, there was a new player kicking a goal. So it wasn't really that special. My first one against Collingwood, were down by 80 points against Sydney. So there wasn't really many boys anywhere. This one against the Bulldogs, it was the game where we beat North and Brucey kicked 10. Um, I kicked a goal oh, for yeah. the, the center bounce goal. So all the boys Who gave you that? No, it wasn't you. But for what it's worth, I was going to say the goal that I kicked against Gold Coast where you handballed me the ball when I took three bounces through the middle and – Remember when I kicked it and the ball just kind of just kept rolling and rolling and it rolled in? Um, I remember a few I that I gave that you that you just kicked off. Yeah, there's one against the Eagles where you took a mark. The on Giants? The and you handballed to me. Yep, one against the Giants where you gave it to me. But yeah, there's been a few <laughs> that you given to me. Um, oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yep. You got another one? I've got one more. Yep, hang on. I've got one here. You go first. I've got one here and I'm just reading. Okay. This is my last one. This is from Muzzy Ahoy. What a name. Good old Muzzy. What do you think? So this is for each other, right? So you've got to give it some you've got to tell me and I've got to tell you. What do you think are your three best character traits that help you to be an elite athlete? So you tell me what my three best are and I'll tell you what your three best are to be an elite athlete. All right. Um number one for you is you're committed. That's one of your yep. best like your traits for being an athlete. You're committed to no matter what it is, anytime, anywhere, you're committed. And that sort of leads into professional. So I'm not going to include that one, but I'm going to – your second one will be uh, just your personality. So your infect- infectious personality, I feel like that helps you be an elite athlete because you, you sort of bring everyone along with you. So you make good friendships and you – you do that kind of stuff, so that's really good for you. And then hard working. Thanks, mate. Third. Appreciate that. Uh, your one would be – oh, it's hard because you've probably got a million. But I think about in terms of just being an elite athlete, I would say your number one is your team orientated. So what, however you word that, that probably – if it's team orientated, that's probably it because you just do anything for your team. Um, number two would be your professionalism. Clearly, 
you got you know you do everything that, to get your body up and about and your number three this is from a footy point of view that separates you because it says your three best that separate you is your courage like it your courage your courage mate Thank is uh is unrivaled and uh All last right. question mate for you before we wrap it up Yep, um, I've got one here, and it's probably hard for you. you. You you would know a former Lions player, but Anthony underscore Heap has gone. What former Lion would you like to have play for you in the prelim final? So just say for you, looking from afar, what former Brisbane Lions player would you like to pick out and put in our team right now? Oh, at the absolute best, jeez, jeez, that's you a hard question. Back to that two thousand and two thousand and one and four period. Um, I'm just going to look at your f- team, right? I feel like you're settled midfield, forward, definitely settled. You don't like, I was going to say John Brown, but you mate, John Brown in there would be pretty scary, but you've got great forward line. I feel like mm. just for this week with matchups, a couple more bigs, I'm going to say, I'm going to say someone to help Harris and Andrews out, like, although you guys have a great back line to help them out even more. I'm going to say Mel Michael in his prime. I like it. I like it. I was thinking actually no, very similar to you. Very similar to you, I was thinking. Um, so I'm going to go with something different. I'm just going to go with uh, what do we got? We've got a lot of um, pressure forwards. You know, it was, and as I said to you a couple of weeks ago, we had our Hall of Fame dinner a couple of weeks ago, and it was just incredible hearing some of the stories. And Mel Michael was there and spoke, and it was unbelievable. And some of the stories they were talking about, you know, the selfless players playing roles for the team, like Fly playing that pressure forward role. But having someone like a, a Jonathan Brown or a Simon Black or a Vossie, um, Vossie. you know, yep, someone like that would be uh, would be my pick. Mate, it'd be scary. Yeah, Jonathan Brown and Joe Danaher, Eric, he'll put together and then throw in Charlie Cameron would be unbelievable. But um, no, that's a good good question. That's good. So we're, we're done, mate. Have you got any more? Uh, no, I'm... Uh, you know, we could go on forever. I mean, we'll save the questions for last week, for next week, which will be our last, obviously, potty, and we'll get another question out there because I've, I've liked answering some questions. But um, I'm actually, no, no, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Stitch Untitled, if you can see it. It's a uh, clothing brand. So jump on uh, onto their socials, have a look at it. It's a, um, yeah, they, they got some great apparel and um, some great friends there. So, yeah, jump on, have a look, get some clothes and um, like it. rock it for this summer. Beautiful. Well done, mate. Oh, well, another good episode. Um, thanks, everyone, again for listening or watching if you're watching on YouTube. But as always, um, jump on, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff. Uh, we're still chasing our 1,000 five-star rating, so make sure if we can get that done before the end of the year, that'll be huge because we can do a massive giveaway and there might be a few extras in there now that we've it's taken so long to get there. So uh, we appreciate all the support. As always, our fans and um, everyone that supports us, thanks to Playbook again for the uh, uh, the support over the last few episodes of the year. And, yeah, just be very excited for the, the weekend, mate, and what's to come. Hopefully see you next week and uh, we're still on the road to success. Yeah, no doubt you will, mate. Cannot wait. And as uh, as I said on the uh, as I said earlier on the potty, everyone's uh, supporting us. So go Lions. Playbook, the place to find a sports coach or mentor. All sports, all ages, all abilities. It's about you playing to your potential, whatever level that is. Visit playbook.coach to find a coach. Playbook is also the place to sign up as a coach if you have sporting expertise and you're keen to share that with others through coaching and mentoring. Everyone is welcome to coach. It's super flexible. You set your own prices, locations, and schedule. Head to playbook.coach to sign up.